In this video, we're going to be talking about how cryptocurrency transactions actually work. We'll touch on the mechanisms and steps taken to see them through. Let's hop right in. Here we go. Fat candle, fat, fat candle. All right, so proof of work and proof of stake mining. Bitcoin, that's how it works. Well, actually, long, long ago, 2010, this is kind of how it would work. You could mine from your PC. Now, no way. I'll tell you why. Because over time, think of math, thinking when you multiply something and multiply something and multiply something, it makes it really, really hard. So think of it like that for crypto. So your computer is a great calculator, but once you make the problem so, so hard, it needs more than just a computer. It needs special computers that crack really difficult codes, which is what you see on the right up here, a huge mining farm with thousands of miners making, you know, lots and lots of Bitcoin. Um, and so that's how it works. So they also, those miners, confirm transactions on the blockchain. So the way it normally works is if you own a business and you write something on a ledger, um, you could change it later, but not in crypto because those other computers, if you tried to change it, would say, no, 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 that, that didn't happen. You can't change that because we see that you are trying to change something that can't be changed. It's immutable. So that's why crypto is awesome. And that's why mining is important because we need people to verify the transactions. We need people to create the Bitcoin and they also speed up the transactions on the network if they're mining too. How it works is they use the, the power to solve the consensus, get the Bitcoin, which is the reward. And then they sell that for more uh, machines that are faster and better over and over and over again. So they continually have the best equipment and make the most amount of cryptocurrencies or most amount of Bitcoin, depending on which currency, because you can mine over 800 currencies, apparently. So, yeah, you have a lot of options. Um, and so why would they mine, for example, if they want to get Bitcoin? Um, and yeah, why wouldn't you do that? Right. So, and also it's good for the network to have it fast. So again, all positive things. So 2010, like I showed you, you could literally use these computers. I had friends mining 50 block Bitcoin blocks, uh, 50 Bitcoins a block with crappy PCs. Really no joke. Cause it was easy back then. It was like, no one was doing it. There were no huge mining farms. So it was easier equations that a normal computer could do. Not anymore. Unfortunately missed that window. Now it's 2018, these are what mining farm look like. So literally huge warehouses with fans and ventilation and they're really hot. It doesn't look like it's hot because you're not standing in them, but they're very, very hot uh, inside of them. And basically these machines are working at a high rate of speed. They make a lot of noise because they're literally working their butts off to crack the codes. So 2010, 2014, now this is what I'm trying to explain. That's how hard it is now um, and that's why we need these special machines because a uh, normal PC just can't cut it. And that's insane to think about it, but it's true. Now imagine we were trying to do that. Oh my goodness. So this is mining difficulty. So you can see guys, back then it was super easy to mine a block of crypto, no problem at all. You could have basically, you know, mined a ton of it, a ton, a ton of it way back when. Now we're looking at like, even in 2016, it became harder, but people are still making profit. But now it's super difficult uh, to mine and it's actually even harder now than it is on this chart, okay? So um, here's something to also keep in mind. Bitcoin halves, okay? so. Every time it has, we usually see an increase in price afterwards, and that's because it's harder to make Bitcoin. So our first Bitcoin uh, from basically January of 20, uh, 2009 um, till, till almost Jan to December, November 28th of 2012, it was 50 Bitcoin every, 50, every 10 minutes. So if you were mining back then, you probably made a lot of Bitcoin because not many people were doing it. The difficulty wasn't high, et cetera. Then after the first halving, Bitcoin was over 12 cents. Okay, And uh, over that time, over the next four years, you got 25 Bitcoin. Now, currently where we're at, we have um, 12.5 Bitcoin per block every 10 minutes. And then when we have the next halving, and this is why people are saying it's going to go crazy, like it's going to go parabolic. Because when we go to the next halving, um, we, on, we only for four years make 1,312,000 Bitcoin. And if you look in the same time frame before that, not even, you made 10,500,000. So we're making less and less, which means it's deflationary, which means that the price over time, if there's demand for it, will go up because we can't make more Bitcoin. Only the amount of that we can total is 21 million. And we know 
that apparently almost 4 million are lost, so they'll never be there. So it's like 17 million or so. Okay, so a lot of you guys have seen this huddle, right? Well, proof of stake is kind of good for those people that huddle. So if you hold a project like NEO, VeChain, um, EOS, for example, you can stake those coins if you pull them off the exchange and get their wallet, you can stake them from their wallet. And what that does, it lets you use your coins to stake the network and basically get like a fee in return for confirming transactions on the blockchain because they use your staked fees, you stake it so that basically you can confirm transactions and help the consensus on the blockchain, right? And then you get a reward for that. So how does staking work? So you meet a minimum amount of coins to stake. So some projects have a lot less. Dash to stake, you have a thousand. So at one point it was like over a million dollars you needed of Dash to stake it. But some coins are not as bad, like VeChain and, and Neo. you only need you know a few coins to do it. And so you can do it with that as well. You put it in a wallet that freezes the coins for staking on the network. So example, Neon Wallet, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and a chance to earn rewards by hodling so long, as long as you meet the minimum uh, staking requirements. So you're basically gonna earn rewards eventually. You might earn less sometimes and more others, but the point is you'll get something for nothing. You know, you just leave your coins in there, you get something for them, they go, you get a little bit more coin back. Even if it's a little bit, it's something better than nothing. So time also factor in. So if you have a, a smaller pot of coins and there's a, god, there's a whale, a person who has tons of coins, if that person keeps winning the staking, your chances keep going up until you get your chance to win your stake. So even though they have a huge pot and they're going to get a huge slice of the pie, um, every time they win, their pie gets smaller. Every time they choose, it's like a randomized selection, like a spinny wheel. So if there's like four people in a corner, they spin the spinner and the one who has the biggest pile usually will win more often. But the ones with smaller piles can also win too. And the ones with small piles, if they keep losing, their pile actually increases in size to make it fair. So how it works like this, if I have two Neo when they were $30, which are not anymore, <laughs> unfortunately, um, and I stake those coins, I can then claim gas, which is their, their reward for staking Neo. So I can do that, put them in, stake them for a certain amount of time. And as you can see, the theor theoretical dividend would have been this much per year, um, but your actual dividend would have been that, okay? But uh, that's not bad, okay? So you could get a little bit of something back it's not a lot but it's better than nothing as i said so proof of stake you don't just hodl which is good the environment obviously proof of work and all those machines require lots of energy which can be wasteful um if you stake and not just hodl you get something for it if the coin goes down at least you're getting something on the other end um and more decentralized and proof of work because uh, as we've seen with those big mining giants they have so much of the actual hashing power to create the Bitcoin. And that's not a good thing. Um, cheaper than buying mining rigs. So mining rigs can cost you anywhere from five to 10K for one. Um, and at this point, a lot of the coins are not that profitable over time. You can make money, but it's not as profitable um, as it was before. So um, yeah, proof of stake for some people is just easier because all you do is get a desktop wallet, you put the coins you already have in and that's it. And you lock them up and eventually you get paid for it. So why mine? So mining basically is just great because you can't cheat. So decentralization means there's no bank or government to confirm a transaction. We don't need a third party. We just need the mining on the blockchain or the staking on the blockchain to confirm the transaction. Okay. We just need confirmation consensus algorithm. Okay. Privacy. You don't have to reveal your identity when you're doing these transactions. Just give them your wallet. Rewards, you can get paid in fees or block rewards. So why not mine if you can get something for it? And it's impossible to cheat the system because if you were to cheat the system, okay, let's say you want to change that 70 block, uh, block 74 right there. What would happen is all the computers on the network would say, no, that actually did not happen. And they wouldn't let you change that block. Okay, the only way to change that block would be if you did a 51 attack and they're so expensive, they cost like millions and millions of dollars an hour. So for them to do that, it would, you need a lot of money to even consider doing that. So that's another aspect to keep in mind that mining is quite safe. Crypto is very safe. Blockchain is quite hard, almost impossible to immute if you don't have a ton of money.
All right, so mining is something that's very essential in cryptocurrency. Proof of work creates Bitcoin and other proof of work cryptocurrencies, as well as verifying transactions on the blockchain. Proof of stake, we lock up coins, we put them into a wallet, and we stake them to verify transactions on the blockchain and get fees or dividends at the end of every month for holding that coin or token, okay? Um, so the good and the bad, the bad about proof of work, it's uh, obviously costly in terms of the energy, it costs money to make, etc. Proof of stake is a little cheaper. Proof of work has uh, less decentralization because of big mining giants like Bitmain. Um, proof of stake though, uh, you know, people have to actually stake coins for it to be fast on the network. Not everyone might do that if the market's going down. So there's good and bad to both of them. And there are other algorithms that exist as well. But these are the two main ones that you need to understand because you can see the mining equipment probably in videos and commercials or uh, even just at your friend's houses potentially. And uh, so you, you, know, you know what proof of work mining is. And staking now, you understand that if you hold a coin and you don't need to hold it on exchange, you can stake it in a wallet and get coins for it. Or you can even think, keep things like um, Neo on Binance and they give you a stake, but they also take a fee for it if you do it that way. So just keep that in mind. You probably don't know that because it's in the fine print. Um, so have yourselves a great day. Coach K signing out. I'll see you guys soon. Back, middle, back, back.